Good morning, good afternoon, whatever it is, wherever you are. It's me again, Jen. Hope you're doing well. Hope you are made it through the week. It is Friday. It is May the 8th, and this weekend is Mother's Day. So it's possible we'll have some Mother's Day related cards. The most Mother's Day thing that I am wearing right now is my Mother of Dragons shirt. Eh, you know, you give you, you give you take. It, it, it is what it is. You say what you want about that mother. She was definitely a mother. Uh, so hopefully we'll maybe learn a little bit about moms today, but maybe not. We'll see. I'm going to shuffle it up. And without further ado, we have, oh, a king, a king of rods. All right. Not a mother, but maybe a mother of other things. All right. <laughs> king of rods. The most important thing that I notice about this one, the first thing that I notice, and maybe it's because I'm a cat person, is the rather large lion in the background. So right behind him, there is a banner, and on that banner is a rampant lion. And rampant means he's like kind of up like this. So I really like this because, again, I think we talked a little bit about rods being fire sign related. And what is the most king of fire signs? It is Leo. Uh, having Living with a Leo, I can tell you it's, it's definitely like living with royalty. Take that as you will. Uh, king of rods is, again... This is the the highest male in the suit of rods. So you have, he kind of looms over all things. He is the regal, he is the leader. Typically when this card comes up, it has to do with a male energy that is older, more mature, someone who is probably in charge of something, be it the head of the household, head of a company, head of his own business, um, the boss of the project, the person you go to. Uh, the man with all the answers all the time. Whether or not they're the right answers, that remains to be seen. Typically, these are people who are in the fire sign, zodiac sort of thing. So as we mentioned before, that's that's the Aries and the Sagittarius and the Leos and, and those types. The other thing is typically rods represent people with kind of a more fair skin tone. They're usually pale to burns in the sun kind of people. And... They are blonde or red-haired, usually fairer eyes, green, blue, hazel, that kind of thing. They are people with a fiery temperament. So this guy, when he's chill and in a good way, he's got a lot of ideas. He's got a lot of motivation. When he's bad, it's bad. He's very loud. He's very fiery and very passionate verbally, probably. These are not people who are usually very physical, in the sense of like when they do things, whether it is something they're passionate about, uh, positive or negative, they are more of the mind. So this is somebody who comes to harsh words and loud tone before they actually get physically angry at somebody. It's also somebody who is, when they think about something, they're the activist. They are the person who is like, I am passionate about this because, and again, right or wrong, whether you agree with them or not, they get very passionate about things. They are usually the idea people. Again, putting things into physical manifestation isn't their core purpose. Their core purpose is to give you the idea and give you the passion to make it happen. When it comes to physically doing things, sometimes they are. Sometimes they're, they're the architects that also build. They are the engineers who also build their creations. But a lot of times they're the ones that come up with the idea, make the plan, and can organize other people really well to make it happen. So that's why I say typically when they say are, they are the leaders, they are leaders of a company, leaders of an expedition sort of thing. They are the thinkers. They are the brains of the operation. And this guy usually is. If he's the head of the household in a very small sort of situation, he is in, in the family unit. He's the man who comes up with the ideas. He is also usually the one who doles out the punishment with things of saying, hey, go to your room, things like that. Uh, and it's usually kind of a creative sort of thing. Uh, the punishment fits the crime a lot of times with this sort of character. 
The other thing you'll notice with this is that he, on his jacket, uh, robe, mantle, what have you, he has these blue, they look like snakes at first blush, but they are dragons. They are definitely dragons. So you have the lion in the background, you have the dragon on his mantle. This is not somebody who is easy to deal with when it comes to their energy. This person is sure of themselves almost to the point of narcissistic and egotistical. Most of the time, if this person has it under control and knows themselves and is very self-aware, they're really cool people to be around. They're motivators. They're super exciting to be around. They can get you into anything. Like, and sometimes that's bad, you know, but they are definitely a great activist. They are a great person to have on your team if you want to make sure everything is always up and moving and energetic and nobody gets bored and nobody feels like they're losing the spirit or the energy of whatever it is you're working on. They can definitely do that. Uh, the other thing in the background is there's kind of these, it looks like three peaks. I tend to lean in and look at these a little bit like the Great Pyramids because again, when you think of great architecture and you think of brilliant ideas and amazing mathematics, you do. You think of the Great Pyramids. So again, I don't know if this is just something that the artist added to this to say, oh, this would be a really cool addition. And again, this is the Mary Hansen Roberts deck that I'm using because I just think that her artwork is beautiful. Maybe once we're through this deck, after a while, we'll go through a couple others that I have because I am a bit of a collector of decks. Um, so I want to go back to this and say that in this picture, at least, he's kind of like down looking down a bit he's very thoughtful this doesn't look like a downtrodden sort of image it looks more like a thoughtful sort of image on his face he's he's emotional but he's thoughtful the other thing that i noticed too is there is a lot of red in this card so again a lot of that fire energy so you've got the yellows and golds and reds in the background of the setting sun or rising sun which is also very fire related. And you have the red mantle and the blue like serpentine dragons on there. Dragons are also fire. All in all, this guy is definitely a powerhouse based on all the symbolism and things behind him. Especially since the lion in the background isn't like it's not a lion who is just kind of perched and proud. It's a rampant lion. He's got his claws up. He's ready to attack whatever might come at him. But it's behind him. It's in the back of his mind. So when you're looking at the cards and you're seeing, like, what's in the foreground, what's middle, what's in the background, sometimes it's interesting to look at it as this is a physical world. That's the thing that's closer to you or in their hand or something they can touch. If it's back here... It's part of their mind. It's part of the spiritual and the mental and the inner world that people have. So it's behind his head. It's part of his thought process. He's almost keeping this lion at bay. Uh, going into some of the different major arcana cards, too, that are symbolized in this, the lion is part of strength. It takes a lot of strength to have this much passion and keep it under control. The, the other symbolism that's in here, the rod is, is a staff, which is something the magician uses in one of the major cards. In fact, I'm pretty sure that the magician is holding the staff. Hopefully when that card comes up, we'll take a better look at it. His crown also looks like fire to me. It's got these kind of tulip-shaped uh, finials on it. So to me, that looks like fire. So much fire energy here. So much of that that desire and burning and, and those kinds of things. So I look at this card and if I were to really apply it to how we feel today, being it's a Friday and that's exciting. And even though a lot of things are happening, I think one of the things maybe to globally look at with this card is look to people who you find give you strength. Look to people who you feel are passionate about something and really who you trust. Look at these people, lean on these people, kind of see what's going on with them. Check in. Check in with dad, check in with mom, 
Because again, even though this card is typically a more masculine energy, that doesn't mean it can't deal with a woman. That's something that I, I don't go into a whole lot, but maybe because of this and breaking things down, sometimes a masculine energy will come up in a read and, and it's really, it's about the woman. A lot of women have a very powerful, like masculine energy. It's that fight, that dominant personality. So it's not very, you know, feminine, more nurturing, that kind of thing that we think of when we think of feminine. This is more action, active, um, uh, kind of the, the I don't want to say the punishment side of things, but more the dominant, the aggressor side of things. So it can have to do with mom. So maybe your mom is a very dominant person in your life and she's a fire sign and you're like, oh my goodness, if anybody was going to crown themselves king, it would be, it would be my mother. So uh, my mom has kind of a really good balance of the feminine and masculine. She's a very feminine person, but you do not mess with her. So sorry, mom, if you listen to this, uh, that's the thing I'd like to leave you with on this card is that just because a card comes up and it is clearly a masculine card doesn't always mean that it has to deal with a man. It can be dealing with the querent who is female. It can be dealing with the querent's mother or sister or boss who is female, but has a lot of those masculine energies. So when you look at these cards, don't just go, it's black and white, it's male and female, it is what it is, and I can't look at it any other way. Feel it. Read it with the rest of the cards, experiencing it with the full reading, and, you know, kind of take all the little pieces of that and see what they mean, because it's not always just one thing. All right, have a wonderful weekend. I will be back again, and hopefully we'll talk more about some of these higher cards and some of the higher arcana as well. Have a wonderful day. Bye.